What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Raw review. Today we are doing the December 13th, 1993 edition. Raw starts off with them reminding us of what happened with Bobby Heenan from last week, of him getting tossed out by Gorilla Monsoon. So now we have Jim Cornette joining Vince at the commentary table. So our first match is Fat 2 from the Head Shrinkers versus Macho Man Randy Savage. For the first parts of the match, Savage had trouble getting anything going against Fat 2. Of course, Afa, his manager, gets involved. Then Savage catches Fat 2 lacking, knocks him off, hits him with the axe handle or axe hammer. Somebody let me know in the comments what it's called. Into the guardrail, and then back in the ring, he gets him and hits the flying elbow for the win. Next up, we have the Smoking Guns getting a win over some jobbers. The crowd is still behind them. I don't even remember the last time these guys were even on Raw in a match. They have a ton of decent teams in the division, and none of them really get featured. The Quebecers are decent heels, but what have they done since winning the belts back in, like, September? Moving on, IRS with a win over a jobber. Something was going on with his briefcase at the end of the match when he goes to pick it up. It opens by itself, and IRS hurries to close it. So I don't know if that was an accident or what, but maybe this will lead to something down the line. The Undertaker making an appearance on Raw to take on a jobber. He came out with Paul Bearer and the urn, but... I don't remember when and how Taker got the urn back from Giant Gonzalez, Mr. Hughes, and Harvey Whippleman. What came out of that Mr. Hughes and Undertaker feud? I don't remember when they had the payoff for that. But anyways, they announced that there will be a casket match at the Royal Rumble between Undertaker and Yokozuna for the WWF title. Taker gets the win with the Tombstone Piledriver. Then he puts his opponent in a body bag to send a message to the champ. And then, you guessed it, another jobber match where Rick Martel gets a win with the Boston Crab. We then see a video from a different show where Owen Hart gets interviewed by Vince and he challenges his brother Brett to a one-on-one -on -one match because he's tired of being in his shadow. And then speaking of which, we have the Brooklyn Brawler taking on Bret Hart and Brett gets the win with the Sharpshooter. This was a quick episode to get through. Not many things happened that really made a difference in the scheme of things. But that is the end of the episode, so let's get to the award. For the best moment, I had The Undertaker being announced as the next challenger for the WWF title. For the worst moment, there weren't even that many segments outside of matches to pick from, so worst moment is not going to get anything for this show. And then for the worst match, Rick Martel versus The Jobber. This was the fourth Jobber match in a row. And this guy wasn't even in the storyline for him to need a win. At least IRS with the briefcase and then the smoking guns. I guess the smoking guns didn't either. I'm going to pick the Rick Martel match just because. For the best match, I had Fat 2 versus Randy Savage, seeing as it was the only non-jobber match of the night. For the wackest performer, now I have said that I like Rick Martel's gimmick, and I do on certain nights. Sometimes he's a little bit too cheesy, but I do enjoy some of what Rick Martel has. And for this episode, I'm going to have to pick him for the wackest performer. If you go back to one of my first episodes doing these reviews... One of the qualifications was that for Wackiest Performer was that they didn't have any place on the show. So I didn't find that Rick Martel had anything of significance on this episode, so that's why I'm giving him the Wackiest Performer. And then speaking of award qualifications, we move on to Standout Performer. And I should really change the word standout here because this was such a generic episode of Raw. If you wanted to introduce someone to wrestling, but like slowly, like they're actually going to... You're not trying to entertain them or anything to get them hooked. You're actually just trying to get them started with the simplest wrestling show that you could ever show them. This episode would be it. So I'm not going to pick anyone for this show since nobody really stood out. So this episode is going to get a bad grade. Like I've said already, there just wasn't much happening. Then you add that there were five jobber matches in a row in one night. It makes it even worse. I was able to watch this 46 minute episode in 20 minutes because of all the filler. So... With all that being said, I'm done. I'll catch you guys on the next one.